welcome to the Stash Down Diaries. My name is Jen and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about all my knitting projects. Well so far it's been knitting. Um, some other things might come up at some point uh, but yeah for now it's just been knitting. Um, I might get my craft on in other areas. I have a cross stitch that I have not finished. So anyway um, I'm coming to you from beautiful Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, which is in Atlantic Canada, if you've never been. And yeah, you're probably wondering, um, I was supposed to do a video last weekend, but I did not because I was painting my iron room. I don't know if you can tell. It was white and now it's blue. So what happened was I was off for six days after having worked the previous weekend. And then I tacked like two vacation days onto that to make it a little longer because I was hoping that the weather would be nice enough for me to paint my steps on my house because I want to start painting my house. The house needs to be painted. But the weather did not cooperate. Um, we had like a little bit of Hurricane Lee. Like it was downgraded by the time it got here, thank God. Because we don't need any more natural disasters in this province. So anyway, I still had a hankering to paint something and this is the smallest room. And this is one that I spend probably the second most time in, um, probably most time in my living room. And uh, well, I spend a lot of time in my bedroom, but I'm sleeping. So <laughs> that's probably the next one I'm gonna paint though. Um, yeah, and like, I don't know if, if anybody who has ever purchased a house like instead of built or um like rented if it's like the way the previous person who owned the house had it it doesn't feel like it's yours kind of a thing and I did like some painting around the house and stuff like downstairs mainly in the upstairs bathroom but when and whenever I did that or um put new furniture or anything curtains it uh, made it feel a little more homey and then, like this has been going slowly over time because uh when i first moved in i had like barely any money so um gradually over time i managed to furnish it and do some painting and changing things around and every time i do it it just feels more like my space so like i went with blue um because it's my favorite color and it's just like this cozy little space. Um, this room is really bright. I didn't want to like darken it with the, the paint color. Um, and I just really like that shade of blue. It's like this like French country kind of color blue. I don't know if it's coming off on camera. But I also reorganized a bit. Um, I still have stuff that was in this room that's in the spare bedroom across the hall now. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I put some art up. Um, that's my great uncle's. And, um, oh, this is another thing I did. Oh, I moved my um, hat garland. It used to be on that wall. And now it's up above my head on this wall. I might wrap some fairy lights around it or something. Something just happened with the lighting. I don't know what that was. Anyway. <laughs> This is my, basically my queue now. I used to have like empty project bags hanging out up here. Um, with, and some with like huge stuff in it, but now it's strictly queue and the empty project bags are strictly in a basket in the closet. So, um, and like, so some stuff is in here too, queued up. Yeah, so these are um, gonna be Christmas gifts that I'm knitting uh, coming up soon, but I will talk about that in a little bit. Um, trying to think anything else. Oh, I had 100 subscribers since the last time. So thank you anybody who subscribed to the channel and thank you anybody who views the video and thank you to anybody who likes or comments. I really appreciate it because it gets me like pushed up into the algorithm and um, so more people can find me. And uh, if you have any suggestions for knitting channels to watch. I know I asked this like a few weeks ago and my algorithm, like for my, the rec videos being recommended to me are so much better now. Like I still have true crime stuff coming up because I'm subscribed to true crime channels. I, I like watching it, but it's just like, I'm not being bombarded with it completely. I'm having like a lot of 
knitting suggestions and I love it when um, Canadian channels pop up. It's really um, exciting. So your opinion on darning socks. So I put on a pair of my fallish socks the other day for the first day of fall. And when I took them off, I discovered that there was a hole in them. And I have a few pairs of socks with holes and I just put them in this pile. What do you do? Do you fix your socks with holes or like, cause the thing I'm thinking, I have so many socks, like so many socks. It's like, it's a really, I rarely have to wash socks because it takes so long for me to wear all of them, especially where you can wear wool socks more than once. So, um, does it depend? Like, I'm thinking like if it's yarn where the color is kind of worn now, the socks have been around a while, do you fix them? Um, if they're fairly newish socks and the color's still vibrant and they're not very pilly, do you fix them then? Cause I don't know what I'm going to do. So if you let me know in the comments down below, I'd really appreciate it. I want to like, give me some advice on what to do with my socks because on the one hand I have a ton on the other hand I guess uh, I guess it depends on if I'm like particularly attached to them I don't know but let me know what you do and then maybe I can draw some inspiration from the you wonderful people out there so yeah and the other thing I want to talk about before I get going I did this little walk down memory lane on Ravelry it was really fun I went to like look at my old projects, like my first ones, because right from the get go, when I started knitting in 2012, I was in Ravelry and I was tracking all my projects and all my yarns and everything. So I can go back to 2012 and look at my first projects. And this is one of them. This is the Age of Brass and Steam kerchief. Um, I can't remember the de designer's name. I think this was my first foray into eyelets. And it was definitely my first foray into a cashmere blend. This is Handmade in Casbah. And it was one of the exclusive colorways to um, Bedeck Yarns, which is now closed. It is called Cabrit and Highlands, and it was my favorite of the colorways. So I would get it in like different bases. Um, I know I have it in Curly Locks. I have it in Chinook. Oh, I thought I had it in more than that. Pretty sure I have it in one of the fingering weight, like maybe cottage socks or something. I can't remember, but yeah, I got a few of them, but I love this. It is so soft and yeah, one of my first patterns. Um, the curly locks one was my first shawl. Should I do a video of my first projects? That might be fun. I might do it just for the fun of it. Cause I want to do it. And then if people watch it, they watch it. I don't know. Because the other thing I did besides going through my older projects was um, I went to the pattern selecting, <laughs> the pattern library in Ravelry and selected um, patterns that were knit between 2008 and 2012 so that I could see the pattern listings the way I saw them back then. And it was so fun. Like it was just... So nice to take that walk down like memory lane and see some of the original patterns, the first ones that I saw on the site. So like Sockhead Hat came up and Hitchhiker. Um, Hokey Locatelli designed Boxy in 2012. Um, I didn't knit it that year, but I did knit it eventually and I still have it. It's really pretty. Um, I think I wore it in a previous video actually. You can see it in my Instagram at some point in the pictures where I'm wearing it. It's uh, my Instagram is CB Island Knitter. I think we'll talk about actual knitting now because I've been rambling for more than 10 minutes. Okay, so acquisitions, because this acquisition will segue right into finished objects, sort of finished objects, semi-finished objects. So if you watched my last video, you saw where I was questioning whether or not I was going to be playing yarn chicken. Um, I can't even categorize what ensued as yarn chicken because I was so far from finishing that um, I can't call that yarn chicken. Unfortunately, I had to order a new yarn, a new skinny yarn. And I had been calling this the whole time 
lilac. It's not lilac. It is lavender. Um, I discovered when I was searching for it that I was calling it the wrong thing the whole time. So this is Cascade 220 um, Heathers in the lavender colorway. And I needed it to knit my humulus, which is living right here in my big Fat Squirrel Fibers bag, which I love. Um, if you're looking for a project bag, keep an eye on Amy Beth because her bags are excellent. So here it is, my Humulus by Isabel Kramer, and all the knitting is finished on it. So it is in lavender and charcoal, and this charcoal colorway has been in my stash since 2012, which is insanity. And yeah, so the ends still need to be woven in on this, but I'll show you where I was. Um, so this is a little, the last decrease. I was about five or six stitches away from it. So I did knit five or six stitches, decrease, knit 12 of stockinette, and then knit 13 of the ribbing. So that's what I had left. And I thought about, I think I actually mentioned it in the last video that I might shorten the other sleeve or um, I was thinking about maybe harvesting some from the length, but I didn't want to do that. I liked how my sweater fit. I liked the length of the sleeve. So I just grinned and bared it to order another skinny yarn, even though like I didn't really want to because I couldn't get it locally. So of course I had to pay for shipping and shipping, if you know, Canada Post is insane. So yeah, but I ended up with like the sweater fitting the way I want. We'll see after it blocks, but from what I can tell, it's going to be fine. I didn't want to put shorter sleeves on it or a shorter length. I like um, longer, longer lengths. I'm not a huge fan of the crop look on me right now. I can't get it to hit where it looks flattering. And my midsection is not very flattering right now. Exercise needs to be done. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so I like long. <laughs> covered up, layered, <laughs> but I do really enjoy this. this. is my first color work sweater, I'm pretty sure. I'm just looking over at my other sweaters. Yeah, it's my first color work one. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I would totally knit like anything Isabel Kramer comes up with. So this evening, my first plan for my little knitting time is to weave in the ends on this. And then it will go in for a wash and a block. And before that, though, and right after I finish recording this, my other finished object needs to go for a wash and a block. And this, I had not even had this cast on in the last video. Um... Amy Palco released her pattern called the Gallus Scarf on September 9th, and uh, I pretty much cast on right away. It is so addictive to knit, and it knits up so fast because it's all knit stitches with short rows, and you're just like zoom zooming along, just knitting away, and then you get to do a color change. And so I knit this like I was knitting this and the sweater like almost monogamously. I was knitting the sweater until I ran out of yarn and then I cast this on and I was knitting this pretty much monogamously. Um, it's Cascade 220 and then this one is Cascade 220 Superwash. All the Cascade 220 has been in my stash since like 2012, 2013, something like that. And um, yeah, so the colorways are natural. This is more of the charcoal, um, summer sky, and stratosphere, and this is silver something or other. This was actually used in a sweater that I knit some time ago that it didn't really fit the way I wanted it, so I started frogging it, and uh, I was ended up. I thought I was going to have enough to do the section, as you could see. I had from here to here that I needed um, more yarn off the sweater so I just knitted it off the sweater and I'm hoping it'll block out. In my previous experience it um, has blocked out when I've done that so 
I'm not really concerned about it. But yeah, I would gladly knit this again. Amy did a great job. Um, yeah. I, she has it written to where you, where it's like a sport weight. It's actually written for a sport and DK weight, but I used a light worsted weight because it's a scarf. It, gauge doesn't really matter. And I'm in my oversized scarf, oversized scarf era. So, yeah. Remember Lenny Kravitz's giant scarf? Wasn't that something? <laughs> so, yeah, this is going in the blocking bath. I would definitely go through my stash and look for my fingering weight yarns because I have a bunch of single skeins that I don't know what to do with. I'm seriously considering using them for this because you hold them double. Um, some people do different things with this pattern that I've seen. Um, they've uh, like made it less wide and used uh, two colors. So And that looks really nice as well. So yeah, it was just so enjoyable to knit. Um, I can't start another one anytime soon because I have to do Christmas knitting. And uh, since I finished my cumulus, I'm going to be casting on the love note. But yeah, really, really enjoyable pattern. Another thing I love about Amy is that when she does her videos um, here on YouTube, she goes into an oracle deck and picks a card to set an intention. And it really inspired me to pick up my oracle deck and um, do that weekly, like set an intention for the week. Because I had been kind of neglecting my oracle deck, which is a shame because it's just beautiful. It's the Sacred Forest oracle deck. And it's so pretty. The art on it is beautiful. And so um, it's just been really fun and like thought provoking to pick a card each week to set my intention for the week. So yeah, she's like inspired me to do that, which is nice. Um, I can't say enough good things about the pattern, really. So that's the Gala Scarf by Amy Palco, and it is going in for a soak in a block as soon as I finish recording this. So. We're locking out without the uh, little troublemaker kittens right now. The dog is asleep at my feet. There's like a sunny spot on the floor. And uh, yeah, she's just chilling out there. Like a good girl. Okay, so whips. I kind of like I worked on my, I didn't do any scrappy knitting. So I didn't work on my other blankets, like my other jelly roll blanket, but I worked on this one. And I figured out how much yarn based on how much I have. Oh, you having a stretch? Oh my goodness. Oh, she's back down again. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I worked out how much yarn I'm going to use for each panel. I'm going to use a ball and a quarter for each panel and just see what the size turns out as. I'm not overly concerned about the size of this. So this is the Jelly Roll Blanket by KF Jones. I have a scrappy version on the needles um, that I really enjoy knitting, but I haven't worked on it since the last video because I did really well at the start of the uh, month doing scrappy knitting. So um, I wanted to do some uh, bigger projects and get them off the needles so I can buy a skein of fall yarn next week, next week, next month. Yeah, so so far I finished a ball and then I'm knitting a quarter of this ball and then I'll cast off that panel and start the next one. So just, you know, a little bit of knitting there on that one. Sorry, Miss Piper. <laughs> so then I also was working on my Feather Vein Socks by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. I can't remember where I was. Um, the last time, this is my little, I think this is from Nomadic Yarns, my R2-D2 in Halloween costumes. Um, I don't know if I had a whole sock finish the last time. I don't think I did. So this is Natural U Yarns from here in Nova Scotia. Um, they're in Picto. Um, this is their Echo Base in Magnolia in Bloom and look how pretty. All those nice fall colors, I just love it. Very fallish. And yeah, so this is the feather vein pattern. Very um, 
addictive like potato, potato chippy like one more I want one more repeat one more repeat one more repeat and I just kind of keep going and going um I'm gonna work on these later this evening when I do my have my knitting time I'm gonna do some stuff around the house first and I'm gonna make some soup and then I will have my knitting time I have one more repeat to go on this sock and then I'm going to turn the heel and when I'm done that I am going to switch back over to my other FO which has not gotten a whole lot of attention since my last video because I was working on the Humulus and the Gala scarf and that is my Suburban Wrap by Hoagie Locatelli and it is living in my Fat Squirrel Fibers bag. So I think the last time I mentioned I couldn't wait to get to the spruce section to see the three colors go together and look I love it I love it so much yeah so there's the textured section no this is the eyelet section and then the textured section and then I have to do another eyelet section and another textured section and then I'll get back into stripes again so I'm hoping to do that fairly soon so I have plans to cast on my love note, but I think I want to finish these two projects first and then cast that on um, because I just, I have a lot of small projects that I need to knit for Christmas. I think I'm going to at least finish the socks. I think my knitting space in my brain is like, having one big project and one little project being my main two projects on the needles at once. That seems to be like a really effective knitting space. Um, Cause yeah, when I, when I didn't have the yarn to finish my Humulus sweater, I ended up starting the Gallus and I actually finished the Gallus sweater right before my yarn came in the mail. So that's how fast that was. That was super fast. Um, so yeah, this will probably, like, I know the socks I'll have done this week, no problem. This, I can probably have it done this week, possibly. If I do that, then um, October, I'm, I'll am i be free and clear to, like, start all the knitting uh, for Christmas. Actually, I already started it. I have some stuff done, so I'm doing pretty good. But, like, these things here, and uh, there's a hat here for a friend that needs to be cast on. And I was thinking about casting that on, but I think what I'm going to do is work on these. Just focus on these two. And the jelly roll was my uh, bedtime knitting. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's basically my plans going forward. I was going to do like hat a palooza, start all the hat knitting for Christmas. It's mostly basically hats and socks. Um, but yeah, so Socktober is starting next month, so I'm going to be casting on more socks for that. So Christmas socks, like gift knitting socks, will be next month. Probably a pair of socks for myself. If I go to Tracy's Rolling Yarn Shop and get myself a pair, not a pair, I get myself um some nice fall yarn, that'd be good. Anyway, so those, <coughs> excuse me, those are my plans. These... And then Christmas knitting and my love note. My next video will be on October 1st or 2nd next weekend. And uh, I'll be able to do a stash update, stash down update at that time. Um, it's going to be a good one because I just finished a sweater and a big scarf <laughs> and only brought in 100 grams of yarn, which were then used in the, oh, she's going to sleep on my knits. I'm going to remove these needles so you don't stab yourself in the eye. There you go. Okay. Yeah, you can just cozy up there. They're getting washed anyway. All right. So I have to go because I have to sew a gala scarf, weave in ends on a sweater, make some soup, clean some other things around the house possibly. I try to save my cleaning for like weekdays. I feel like weekends I should be able to do exactly what I want when I want. So uh, weekdays try to do all the chorey stuff but anyway so yeah soup making yarny stuff no chores I will see you next weekend don't forget to like and subscribe take care